Chris Anke, uh, you're up in Prince Rupert. Uh, thank you for joining us. Your company is the Blackfish Group. Um, tell me a little bit about the group of companies that you have, and then let's talk about how the changing landscape, of course, with this uh, uh, health crisis is impacting your business. From there, of course, we're going to go on to, uh, you know, how are you uh, developing strategies to navigate your way through this? And do you also see opportunities in the midst of all of this? Okay. That's a sure. multi-layered uh, question. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No problem, sir. Well, yeah, I, it's, uh, you recall, I, uh, president of Blackfish Group of Companies. I, I am a partner in uh, Blackfish Industries, which is a heavy civil. Uh, I am also a partner in Big Crude Energy, uh, which is uh, moving solid bitumen by rail. Uh, and I have a consulting outfit called Blackfish Enterprises, uh, which provides strategic advice uh, to uh, First Nation industry and government around the energy sector. Um, and uh, I'm involved in a small, a couple of small sustainable development projects uh, uh, at the very moment. So, and yeah. so, how is how is business in that in within your group? Uh, are there some sectors that are doing better than the others? Uh, our heavy civil. Uh, surprisingly, uh, we're okay. We're stable. Um, we're still operating in the Northeast. Uh, you know, we're trying to be careful. <clears throat> Obviously, everybody's trying to watch their bottom line. Uh, Blackfish Enterprises has been hit a bit. Um, you know, I had to adjust just like everybody else. Uh, it's, it's not surprising. Um, it's a different sort of... I, I'm not really stressed. It's a different sort of feeling. I... Um, it doesn't. It kind of reminds me of two thousand and eight market crash, uh, but I. It, it's an emphasis on. I think for me is keep moving forward. Um, I was able to adapt. I think. Uh, I think uh, being able to understand what has to happen as you own a small business, you you got to be able to adapt daily, right? And so that's what I've done. Uh, our our big crude uh, project has continued to move forward. Um, we haven't really been impacted. The only thing that we can't do at this very moment is that uh, we cannot um, provide a, uh, a public demonstration of the transfer test of uh, the bitumen from one sea can to another. So due to the COVID uh, pandemic situation, that's been on hold. So uh, we're still out and operating in Brudeheim. Uh, our chairman is actually a nice call with him this morning and we got our welders and whatnot that are out there. So, you know, thank God people are still working um, on that. Uh, but the industry itself is taking a big hit. Uh, a lot of the individuals that I work with have, have been hard, hard. Have you been able to maintain your workforce or have you had to let a couple of people go? Because despite the fact that you say that you're doing quite well, there may still be a downturn. Have you had to, uh, you know, make any of those difficult decisions? Uh not so much in our, we always had a smaller uh, workforce when it came to uh, our heavy civil. There wasn't a lot, anywhere between three and four operators. Um, we have about three machines that are on site on the heavy civil side. Uh, for the big crew project, moving solid pitchman by rail, uh, our, our chairman has been able to actually hire some people um, to get this job done. Uh, not a lot of people. Nonetheless, we're able to get some people uh, working. Uh, as per Blackfish Enterprises itself, um, I've had to readjust myself, I guess, if you will. Um, things don't didn't necessarily slow down for me. I've had to be more creative in terms of how I would have to conduct business uh, with Indigenous um, communities and leaders, uh, with government, um, with industry, a lot of phone calls. A lot of Skype, a lot of online camera uh, uh, conference calls, if you will. Um, but in terms of me um, trying to adjust personally with my family, uh, there's been a bit of an adjustment. Obviously, everybody's trying to watch their bottom line. They're trying to watch their cash flow. Um, you know, we're I'm fortunate, I'm fortunate enough. Uh, we have dual income in our house, so it's uh, we're okay. But we definitely had to adjust. There was no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. So as you look uh, towards the next two or three months from a business perspective, uh, and we start to get a, a clearer sense of how all of this uh, is going to shake out, 
do you anticipate that you're going to have to make changes and what what might be some of those changes well um for me i i I always see the good in everything um i think it's really important to see uh the bigger picture i think on the back end here people are failed might not see the opportunity right now but the opportunity should be significant for businesses to get back up and running Uh, as you know there's going to be a big push to get uh, the economy going and i feel pretty blessed to be in a position where um, i'm able to have those discussions with industry and government Um, in terms of adjusting to this new way of doing business perhaps you know more skype calls more phone calls I, I definitely, uh, Stuart, have really analyzed a lot of things that I wasn't getting done. Uh, and it's opened my eyes to the world around me in terms of, look, we have all this technology. I don't think I needed to be in person a lot of the times on, on business trips. Uh, I think the also the thing that has really been uh, really good, which you, you lose focus of at times, is my family. Uh, has been so fantastic through this whole thing. Uh, my partner, my wife, uh, she's really held down the fort with the children. Plus, and at the same time, she still works. Uh, so we take our turn and we uh, do our best we can. Our, our kids, I think, have they have uh, adapted quite nicely. Uh, but in terms of business, um, one of the things I want to be cognizant of is to stay ahead of the curve. Uh, to be prepared that uh, I think what's going to happen is going to be a big push uh, to get this economy up and going. And there's no better way to do that than looking at our energy sector to get us out of this uh, deficit that the economy is going to be in. Uh, I anticipate probably between 16 and 24 months before you start to see real money flowing. Uh, As you know, the emergency package is there to sustain us for a short period of time. And then after that, you're hopefully, you know, companies will be able to start to turn revenue uh, and you'll start to see more people get back to work. Um, there's going to be a lot of good opportunity at the backside of this. So do you think that the landscape, because things change no matter what, uh, it, you know, I'm happy to hear that your business is m- uh, moving through uh, comfortably, uh, albeit with changes. But uh, you talk about your relationship and your role in the energy sector because you've got solid bitumen that you are now demonstrating that you can move by rail. That whole sector, of course, has been bogged down in a wide variety of other discussions. Do you think with this COVID-19 pandemic that it's going to change that discussion? Do you think that the, the, the conversation around climate and in particular the energy sector in Canada is going to have a different tone? I believe it will. Uh, I think more than ever before that uh, I think the country itself is probably now realizing just how important our energy sector is. <clears throat> but I think more importantly, when you take a look at the grassroots uh, of where you're really greatly impacted, you know, from those that have to work in the industry at every level, right down to the mom and pop shops, I think you're going to see a big push uh, to make sure that people keep the lights on that the bills are paid, the focus, obviously, we know climate change is real and things are happening. Uh, but I think more than ever before, the, I think you're going to see a change in how uh, leadership within our Aboriginal communities uh, look at these opportunities. And I think that government, both levels in government, are going to now really realize and understand that, you know, uh, this is a great opportunity to get our com- economy back up and running. And what better way to get it going with the, within our energy sector uh, to get cash flow put back into both levels of government, both in British Columbia, Alberta, uh, federally. This is probably the greatest opportunity ever seen in the history of our economy that this is the best opportunity to get things going in the energy sector. You mentioned, of course, uh, Indigenous businesses and, uh, and uh, you know, employees or, and workers. Um, Will they play a fundamentally important role in how the energy sector will move forward in Canada? And does this COVID-19 pandemic um, uh, stress a little bit more uh, the reliance that the energy sector is going to have on uh, Indigenous communities and business leaders like yourself? I think that... uh I think Canada is going to start to look to be more self-sufficient um, in ways of making sure that we take care of uh, our, our own first. 
mean Canadian citizens and how we are able to uh, adjust to that is going to be yet to be seen. I think um, it's going to be a bit of a bumpy road, uh, but I think you're going to find more opportunities for Indigenous businesses and Indigenous communities to get more involved in big global business. Uh, if I was a uh, being an Indigenous uh, business person myself, uh, I think in the Indigenous leaders right now today have the greatest opportunity to be part of big global business and in, in, in any every time in our history uh, being involved in business, big business. Uh, I think there's a great opportunity for Indigenous leaders to really bring their communities really, truly out of poverty and to be real equity uh, holders within our big business in terms of energy and helping our people get back to work, uh, getting small businesses up and going, helping our Indigenous people get into business, uh, more funds and revenues getting back into uh, arts, culture, uh, infrastructure, healthcare, education. Uh, if, uh, if I'm an Indigenous leader, I'd be looking to put together a really good economic plan uh, and making sure that we take advantage uh, of these, uh, this crisis. Uh, because in the back end, if you're out of front and if you got a plan, uh, you're going to have a real opportunity to capitalize on this. Well, uh, and it's my understanding that there, you know, it's not, not just my understanding. I know that in Canada, if we want to move forward in the development of resources, it can only be done in cooperation and partnership with the Indigenous communities that are in those areas where the resource is going to be developed and then transported. And, you know, in looking at your uh, profile online, I, you know, you... Um, are sharing the word that there is a tremendous amount of um, enthusiasm uh, for doing just that within Indigenous uh, communities and with Indigenous businesses, which is somewhat counter to the, the mainstream message that we hear. Um, you know, how, how do we get that voice out that the, the opportunities for Indigenous businesses and those who choose to partner with them is remarkably robust? I think um, I think the indigenous leaders themselves got to come out and uh, be vocal about the opportunity that's before them. I think at the other at the at the same time, while they were while they are getting more involved, I think that uh, information about the energy sector sector needs to be front and center uh, about what what this energy sector is all about. Because I really believe for a very long time. Uh, for the last 10 to 15 years, there's been a lot of information out there about the energy sector that I believe that has been very misleading, uh, both the oil and gas sector. And a lot of that, of course, had to do with a lot of the environmental groups, um, which, of course, worried a lot of our Indigenous communities. But I think the Indigenous leaders themselves, uh, the chiefs and councils, um, have a golden opportunity to be front and center and to be a, a, like they were players before. But I think you have a real golden opportunity to be an actual real global player. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, it's no secret that Canada's big push is to get Indigenous inclusion. Uh, this would be a great opportunity for them for NANO to come out and be front and center of one of the biggest opportunities this country has ever seen. And so it's odd that this COVID-19 pandemic uh, provides opportunities for people who are willing to step up and realize them. Uh, and you clearly are one of those people who are saying, okay, there are challenges, but there are also opportunities. What's your word to others? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Stuart, I, we've had this discussion multiple times. This is about inclusion. And uh, as I mentioned to you before, I, I've had my reservations and still have my reservations about UNDRIP. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, we've always said, as indigenous leaders, as in business, as indigenous business people, as government, we said we need to make sure that our indigenous people are taken care of, regardless where they live. Um, as you know full well, some of our communities are uh, in the middle of nowhere, uh, and they're very secluded. And if we're talking about opportunities around the corridor, some of these communities don't have that opportunity to engage big business. So how do we take them along? And I only the only way to do that is make sure that they're a part of that whole corridor solution to get big business at the table to understand that some of those revenues that are going to be made through, whether it's pipeline or LNG, oil, gas, methanol, that they have an opportunity to be a real player. 
Um, because otherwise, like, how else are they going to be able to grow their communities? I, a lot of the communities don't want to rely on on INAC or Indigenous uh, services anymore. Uh, as you know, uh, that budget is always exactly what it is, a limited budget that doesn't always cover the necessities in order to live in these communities. And that's health care and education and our elders. Uh, you know, uh, we have a, a population, uh, unfortunately, that we're losing uh, of, of just a, a multitude of knowledge of, of our history, our culture, our language. Uh, and it takes money to sustain all that. We can't rely on the government for that. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us to be independent, to be a real sovereign nation where we take care of ourselves through uh, economic development. And I believe it's the energy sector. I know it's the energy sector that's going to help us get us there. It's a great opportunity. And I'm trying to see the glass, glass has, half full here. Well, I always appreciate your optimism and enthusiasm for the future. Thank you, Chris, for taking time to uh, uh, let us know how uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting you and uh, not so greatly, which is good to hear. Um, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Thank you. I appreciate you having me as always. Mm-hmm.